Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 12, Episode 84. He's Dave Bryan. I'm Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com. Happy Monday to you all, Steelers Nation. And you can't get rid of me quite that easily, guys. I know we said, uh, Dave and I, on Friday show that there would be, you know, different podcast plans with myself in Mobile, Alabama. But because the bat signal, as Dave would like to say, went up for Steelers team president Art Rooney the second yesterday. There was so much information. I asked Dave, let's do a podcast here uh, Saturday evening to go up for Monday just to kind of recap some of the big stuff that Art Rooney said. So again, being recorded here Saturday. So any news that comes out from then, uh, you know, Saturday till Monday, we won't be able to address. But uh, Dave will probably have Tom or somebody on later in the week to get it. So Dave, how you doing? I'm doing good. Is Tom Brady retired or is he not I was say, retired? Maybe by the time you're listening to this, we'll know an answer. <laughs> yeah, what a what a crazy, crazy uh, uh, day there. And, uh, you know, a lot of these major media guys like Schefter and uh, you know, I think NFL.com still have still have those reports out there. Yeah, so, Rappaport standing by his report, essentially. You know, everybody's uh, standing by the report. And, man, I tell you, at least Ben Roethlisberger for, for a couple of days got a nice little run in the sunshine there, right? You know, Mm -hmm. and uh, now obviously the attention's all turned to Brady and Izzy or is it the and 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 that kind of stuff. And man, I tell you, if if indeed Brady does retire and I would think Rob Gronkowski would probably follow him out the door there. I don't know what's going to happen to Adrian Peterson this offseason, this offseason. You would think that's about it for him as well, too. Uh, Man, that, that class of 2027 is filling up in a hurry. It is. And so, you know, part of me secretly hopes that Brady plays one more year. So he's not in the same class as Ben, because if he is, then Brady will get 95% of ESPN's attention. And it'll be the Tom Brady Hall of Fame ceremony with a couple other guys. But a special we'll, guest. Ben <laughs> <laughs> not even special guests, just with guest. It's yeah. like it'll be like the Subway commercial Brady's in. But they're, they're just so in the show in the sandwich and Tom Brady, too. And then they're just like the avocado. You know that commercial? <laughs> yeah. I okay. Do. I, I don't mean to make this an ad for Subway, so I shouldn't do that. But anyway, let's uh we we're, we're on a time limit today. I want to speed through what Art Rooney had to say and just kind of hit on the hit on the topics, but kind of go through them pretty quickly. Um <laughs> we'll start things off here with the biggest news that Art Rooney had to say regarding Kevin Colbert. Rumors about Colbert's retiring uh for weeks now. This was confirmed by Rooney yesterday. Or, yeah, Friday, I'm getting my days mixed up, but Friday, you're listening to this on Monday. Uh, Regardless, saying that Kevin Colbert will be stepping down after the 2022 NFL draft. Did note that there's a chance Colbert could stay on the team in some sort of advisory, you know, smaller role, kind of a la uh, Ozzie Newsom, uh, who did that with Baltimore. But the main point here is that Kevin Colbert will no longer be the general manager of the Pittsburgh Steelers following this upcoming draft. The team will begin looking for his replacement immediately. We'll not make a hire until after the draft, but they've already interviewed both Omar Khan and Brandon Hunt inside the organization, and they'll be conducting uh, external outsider interviews as well. So Kevin Colbert, it's official, will be retiring here in just a couple of months or stepping down in a couple of months. Yeah, and we'll see what kind of role he, uh, you know, what, I, I don't, I don't know how you feel about that. Just hanging around. I mean, what's it going to be doing? Picking up, uh, 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 picking up uh, cans or something like that, and uh, uh, emptying, emptying waste, pa- uh, waste paper baskets and and and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, I tell you what, if I was coming in there, uh, you know, and I, I, I don't, I'm not sure I would want the previous guy just hanging around. You know. Uh, uh, that kind. Of, I mean, I understand why you you want probably to want to make the transition as as easy as possible. But uh, uh, you know, the whole Ozzy uh, Ozzy Newsom thing with uh, with the with the Ravens and all like that. I, I suppose that could work on some level. But man, I, I I tell you what, if it was me, uh, I I would want the whole ball of wax in my hands. To be quite honest with you, you know. But uh, you know, I understand. And, and look, I know there's 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 almost secured longevity to go along with this. In other words, mm-hmm. uh, but it, just something about having your predecessor kind of hang around, you know, 
that 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 there would there would be some easy e- uneasiness to it. I know there's probably some. I think there are some reports out there saying, well, Brandon Hunt's been pretty much running the drafts anyway. You know, I I mean I don't know how how true that is. I mean, uh, uh the 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 validity of that kind of stuff there. But uh, regardless, I mean, it sounds like just from at least from a title as uh, aspect uh, standpoint that after the draft, you know. Don't find somebody to take over that spot. Now, will it be kind of a dual, uh, you know, kind of a dual role with you, you know, if you will, with maybe Brandon Hunt and, and Omar Khan? Will will one be over the other? Will mm-hmm. they will they legitimately uh, give uh, give somebody from the outside a chance? I think you've written up a couple of you know uh, 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 possible candidates when it's when it comes to that as well too. But uh, you know, do do we really know how this is going to go? We don't. Um, it, it's interesting. A couple points, and I know I mentioned Ozzie Newsom, but I've gotten so many comments saying, well, this is the same exact thing Baltimore did, and it's not. To recap what happened in Baltimore, prior to the 2018 season, Ozzie Newsom, who was the general manager of the Baltimore Ravens, said, this is going to be my last year as GM, and I'm going to step down, and Eric DeCoste is going to become GM. And so they did that. And so in January, January 11th, I want to say, of 2019, Eric DeCosta officially became GM at Newsom moved into that smaller kind of advisory role. So this did not take place post draft. I want to make that very clear. I don't have a problem. I don't have a big problem with Cobra kind of being in that advisory type role, a good sounding board for a you know new GM taking over and can um kind of be able to, to talk and, and lean on Cobra when need be. What I don't like is just the idea of having a GM take over after the draft, after your whole free agency, after your whole draft, after your whole offseason. And it's not being built in the vision of that new GM Whoever it is, I get that Hunt and Khan are working alongside and they're going to be part of that process, but they're still, I assume, not the decision makers there. And so you're interviewing guys from the outside when your GM's still there. It's just, to me, messier than it needs to be or should be. Um, my personal preference, and this is the way most teams do it, is a new GM starts at the start of a new offseason. So they can build that roster so crucial to to your team in their vision and not someone else's vision. Um, is this going to cause irreparable harm to the Steelers. No, I don't want to make more of it than it is. And if any team's going to be able to pull it off, it's a team as stable and as strong as Pittsburgh. But I got to be honest, I'm I'm surprised by that overall. And I don't think it's the best thing for the team. In other words, the way it's laid out that it's looking like it might go. Right. Just the fact that your GM for the 2022 season, once the season begins, is not the guy that built the roster in the offseason. I think whoever that is gets the chance to do that. He won't. He now won't get to do that until 2023, essentially. Right. Now, when, when Colbert went in, he went in fresh, right? Yeah. He, you know, Donahoe got fired, lost the power struggle to uh, to Bill Cower, and, and Colbert was hired. I can check the date, but it wasn't after the draft. I'm 99% sure. Right, right. I'm just... Uh, I. I you know, look, I, I I understand they've all been around the organization a long, long time. You know, but uh, there, it just I don't I you know I'm with you at the fact that it just it feels a little messier, and I'm not so sure. And and you know I understand that Colbert might stay. How would you feel about having Colbert hang around like that? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I I'm not upset about that part. I'm just upset about the combination of things. You're interviewing outside guys, well, but not making a hire for months. Colbert's still going to be hanging on. He's going to be going through the draft, kind of leading this thing. Just the combination of things. But yeah, I I don't know how Hunter Khan, whoever the future GM might be, reacts to that. I uh, I know they're going to interview outside guys, but can you make an outside hire in June? I mean, that's not going <laughs> to that's not a great strategy, I don't think. You know, he, in other words, you just think it's just giving it lip yeah. service, you know, more, more, more than anything. And, and I, and I agree with that, but what if you do, I mean, uh, man, if I'm Omar Khan and I don't get it this time around, I, I, I'm not sure if I stay, you know? Right. And this doesn't take into account, and you know, I think it's going to be moot, but the risk of a, if you did want to interview outside guys, you don't get to inter- interview the top guys. Like you could have Colbert was stepping down, you know, after the season ended, um, uh, because they're all getting hired and interviewed and, and making their plans. And then the risk of what happened if Con or Hunt would have gone somewhere else, you know, Con interviewed with Chicago, Hunt interviewed with the Raiders, they could have left. And so they're just, they were just risky were throwing into the arrangement by having Colbert wait until after the draft again. Is it going to hurt the team? Looks like Con's thing. Looks like Hunt is staying for, uh, the next couple of months, but I just think that was unneeded risk this team took. 
Yeah, there's a lot of people carrying the Steelers water on this and and and, right. and, af- and afraid to qu- criticize uh, the process. And look, it, the process might just go absolutely smoothly, might have the best draft ever, might be in the Super Bowl three of the next five years, you know. But mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't mean that you can't just ask more questions about how this process is going down. I, I'm, just, I'm just talking just from a sheer fact. I'm 50-something years old. I've been obviously through, through a lot of different uh, companies and all like that. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I want my... Uh, my previous boss just hanging around or, or having to uh, take over uh, at a crucial time. Uh, and, and make no mistake about it, this is a crucial time, right? <laughs> you, you, you move it on from your franchise quarterback yeah. there. And then you got uh, 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 the old general, general manager still supposedly calling most of the shots here. And then off out he goes, uh, okay, where are my golf clubs? Uh I'm off to the golf course here, you know, and, and what does after the draft define who's going to handle the uh, post draft uh, is Colbert going to go out there and talk about the picks with Mike Tomlin right after the draft is over, like he does every year. And is that considered as, uh, the official win of the draft? Will that be the last time that we kind of officially hear from, from Kevin Colbert? So uh, I, I think you continue to continue to use the word messy. And I, and I agree. I mean, mm-hmm. I, uh, uh, if I, you know, I, I just would put it back in my terms of how I would feel, you know, yeah. and I would want more say. And, and if, if a guy, whoever is going to, and they haven't come right out and say, said who the successor is yet. So maybe they don't really know, but uh, you would think you would kind of have all that wrapped up and let that, let that guy have a lot of say uh, right. uh, in, 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 in this process. Right. Right. At the least, you should probably do that like they did with the, the cost and said, this is going to be the guy. Now, maybe you can't do that because of the minority rule stuff. you got to interview outside guys. So maybe it's a, a, a trickier uh, line to walk. But again, my overall issue is just very clearly in a critical offseason for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So much change, new quarterback, all those things. There's got to be a clear guy in charge from start to finish. In this case, it doesn't seem to be the case. And I think that's not a great process. Again, is that going to destroy the franchise and, and reduce them to ashes? No, they're going to survive. You know, life goes on. But do I love the way that this is working out? No, I don't. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Man, I got to turn this all 22 off. I'm distracted. <laughs> Dave, come on now. Take this a break. Is, this Lock is, in. I love, I love football. <laughs> I, love oh, all, man. I love all 22. I'm sorry, folks, but I, I got uh, watching some all 22 from uh, the uh, the Shrine Bowl practices, and it's, it's sucking me in, uh, into the <laughs> vortex here. Uh, carry on. So, yeah, we know that uh, Art Rooney confirmed that both Omar it's Khan. It's crystal and, clear, too, by the <laughs> yeah, way. It does look like good tape. Yeah, they got some good tape down in Vegas. Uh, something uh, something in the air. All, all that lack of rain. I don't know. Yeah, something, I it guess. is. It looks. I can't wait to do. Hurry up, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. All right. Oh, God. Um, so, yeah, Art Rooney confirmed that Omar Khan, Brandon Hunt, have already interviewed for the job. Um, don't, we don't know who they're going to pick internally. If it is going to be one of those two guys, which it very, very likely is my strong guess. So it'll be Brandon hunt. Uh, Art, when he talked about how they given hunt more responsibilities over time. Some with the team for a long time kind of comes from that very similar path. Hunt has taken over his life uh, as Kevin Colbert from being scout to pro scouting director to GM, which is what hunt and Colbert have basically done. They're both Pittsburgh guys. Hunt grew up in the area, went to Pine Richland high school, played his football at IUP just up the road, up North Pittsburgh. Um, so my strong guess is the next GM of the Pittsburgh Steelers will be Brandon Hunt. Yeah, that's not, and and that's kind of been the feeling. Yeah, uh, I, I, but we've had that for years now. Way uh, before uh, he yeah. kind of jumped in, it was because everyone thought Con is going to be Con, and, and and now it's I think it's going to be Brandon Hunt. Yeah, and look, I mean, there there's something there for for some reason why Con, you know, and and maybe it is the more the football background. And look, like I think like once again, I think there's some some reports circulating on Twitter that Con that uh, that uh, uh, Hunt's been pretty much. Uh, look, I mean, he's been in that scouting role for for quite a while, and and you see more interviews with him, right? On on Steelers dot com, didn't Missy do something with him, breakfast with mm-hmm. him uh, yeah. at at the combine or something along those lines? Not too long ago, so it does. It has seemed like he has been being he has been pushed out in front a a, a, a little bit more there. But once again, you know, uh, uh, if if I'm con at this point, and I'm I'm thinking I want to uh, progress further. 
I, I'm not going to progress further in the Steelers organization at that point. Now, obviously, sure. people aren't beating down his bush for 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 one reason or another to hire him, even though as as we keep reiterating, it sure seemed like he had the job uh, in the bag with the Texans a couple of, you know uh, uh, this time last year, and that obviously fell through there. But uh, makes you kind of wonder what what is it about Con? You know, it, is it just the football not having enough of the football background? And Lord knows he's been around it for long enough. You know, Mm -hmm. but Uh, are you filing reports and actually, you know, evaluating talent might be the thing. He did do some of that with the Saints way back his first NFL job, but hasn't you know done much since and is kind of known as the the cap guy. So are we to assume that if if any trades are are, are to be made this year during the draft uh, that uh, Kevin Covert will be the one pulling the trigger and orchestrating all that and not taking a vote in the room or or, uh, asking his possible uh, uh, successor and all, all that? I'll assume so because he's still GM, but I don't know. And that's the messy part. Now, maybe it's messier to us than them because we're on the outside trying to guess and they may have it figured out better. Obviously, you would think so. You would hope so. But I don't know. And that's kind of my my gripe of the situation. Maybe we'll get to the point after the fact and 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 three months from now, maybe they'll come out and say, look, you, you, you know, uh, Hunt. Hunt was pulling the strings all along here and Kevin Cole was just helping guiding things along. But even then, you know, I. Uh, it, 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 it still doesn't look as great on paper. Yeah. Now, in terms of external options, because they will interview external options, and he has said as much, and I think they're required to by the NFL as, as well. Um, the couple of names I threw out in an article this, or on Saturday morning for Steelers Depot, uh, two names in particular, uh, Lewis Riddick, um, who's gotten some GM looks, really bright guy, uh, obviously on ESPN right now. I think he'd be a good fit, went to Pittsburgh. Uh, his cousin, Tim Lewis, was a DC in Pittsburgh back in the, uh, early 2000s, and then Mike Mayock, which I know people will not like me for saying that, but I think Mayock would be a good fit, really hard worker. I don't think his time with the Raiders as a GM was as bad as people think. I know there were certainly some missteps for sure, but you know, what was that struggle between him and Gruden and Gruden kind of running the show? You know, how much did that play into a factor? How much control did Mayock really have? So, will that happen? Probably not, but that's something that I personally would not mind. I, I'll admit, though, I am hopelessly biased because I'm a big fan of Mike Mayock. Uh, well, here, here's the thing, too. You would think because of knowing already the dynamics and the relationship that 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 Mike Tomlin already has in that organization with a guy like either Brandon Hunt or Omar Khan that uh, you wouldn't risk bringing in uh, 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 risking a scenario of having some oil and, and water or vinegar, you know, however that saying goes, oil and, and water, you know, not mm-hmm. mi- mixing uh, together. So, uh, yeah, I think they will interview guys from now. And I think they have to, don't they? Right. Uh, yeah. uh, so, but, but once they do that, uh, I, I still feel fairly, fairly confident. It'll be someone within and the way kind of Art Rooney uh, answered some of those questions, uh, uh, both in, in, you know, I think is normal, normal uh, session with the media and is one would, 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 would Missy Matthews. It sure sounds like Brandon hunt, you know, it's, it, it sounded more like him, him, uh, 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 you know, verifying or, or validating Brandon Hunt. Yeah, and that's why I think Khan has interviewed so much for GM jobs. I know Hunt did with the Raiders, but was that, you know, what was that about? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I will throw out one other name in terms of outside candidates. You talk about the relationships and that head coach GM relationship has to be so strong. Again, this may not excite people. I'm not endorsing it. I'm just doing some classic Alex Dock connecting. Rick Spielman, who just got fired by the Vikings. Uh, he worked under Colbert in Detroit in the 90s when Colbert was the scouting director there, and Spielman was a pro scout. And also uh, his brother, Chris, was, was a player for the Lions, so I don't know if we, uh, Colbert had a, had a role in that. And then Tomlin in 06, this year in Minnesota, Spielman was in the front office there. And so there are some relationships there. Maybe Colbert recommends him. It's a guy with experience. I mean, all the guys we're talking about, basically, besides me, you know, never been GM before. So if they wanted to go that route with somebody like a Colbert who had been there, done that, had been a GM before, I think Rick Spielman's a name to consider. All right. Fair enough. But again, I think it will be internal and I think it will be Brandon Hunt. So that is the status on Kevin Colbert. And was John Clayton right or wrong about this? I'm trying to figure out which side of the coin he ended up on because he was on both. <laughs> Hey, there you, you tell go. me. Anyway, we'll move on from that. A couple other things we'll go quickly through. Rooney's comments did confirm they want to get a long-term deal done with Minka Fitzpatrick later in the year. That should come this summer, kind of a la TJ Watt. Hopefully not as last second, but could be, you know, how these negotiations go. But confirmation from the, from the team, they want to lock down Minka long-term. 
Yeah, and that's not surprising, right? I mean, right. Uh, uh, the moment they put the fifth-year option on him uh, last year during the offseason, uh, that kind of stuff is usually with the goal in mind to get the player signed to a long-term deal. Now the, now the question just becomes, uh, 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 you know, the, 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 the timing factor there. And uh, they're not going to be in a hurry, I don't think, to do it. They don't have to because uh, a long-term deal with Mika is probably not going to lower his uh, his cap charge, which is a little over $10 million, uh, as we sit here right now. So I think you're going to get into training camp with us still talking about waiting waiting on the Steelers to extend Mika. And I, th- I very well think that you could get in a situation where you have kind of a uh, – uh, 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 a hold in, if you will, like TJ right. Watt uh, uh, last year, because if, if, if I'm Mink and I know a big deal's coming with all that guaranteed money potentially on the, on, on the table, I'm probably going to take the same path as, uh, as, as TJ Watt uh, did. So uh, it's not guaranteed to play out that way. I mean, they could obviously get this thing done before training camp. Uh, and before preseason, but just looking at the history of how things have gone with this thing, it usually happens after players report to training camp and all. And uh, from where I sit right now, I'd be a bit surprised if it didn't happen that way. We might get two or three weeks into in, in, into the preseason uh, before they get a deal done. I am mm-hmm. convinced they will get a deal done. I think now it's just a matter of the economics. Is he going to be the highest paid safety in the league? Uh, uh, is he going? I mean, if I'm his agent now, too, looking at what happened with T.J. Watt kicking down that door, I'm going to want at least the first two years of that deal yep. guaranteed, if not the first three. Uh, uh, from there. So, uh, uh, it's just validation coming out of Art Rooney's mouth that they, they do want to get him, you know, something that we expected to happen is now expected to happen even more. Right. And so I think uh, I'm with you hundred percent. It'll happen this summer. It will get done. Mink will be the highest paid safety in the league. The details we'll have to wait and see, but I think it'll play out similar as it did for TJ Watt. All right, Dave, uh, another thing, uh, fans will love to hear that news. They will not love to hear the basically admission from Art Rooney that Matt Canada will return as Steelers OC. Didn't directly say, but talked about improving the offense and said that Matt will have to address the offense in the offseason. So that means that Canada is returning. No surprise by this point, new move had been made. Senior Bowl happening as you're listening to this on on, on Monday here. So um, Canada returning as OC, which I know will anger a lot of fans. It really should not surprise that many fans, though. Yeah, not not surprised one bit, uh, really, there. And uh, I, I think that's kind of the things people probably probably should have been expecting uh, throughout this team thing. I think the only, the only real question maybe uh, was the fact that it would, would, would Matt Canada want to leave, you know, and that, that obviously wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't the case there. So uh, not surprised one bit. Uh, he'll get at least, uh, 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 at least one more season here and who knows what the quarterback's going to look like and who knows what the, uh, uh, what, what the offense might, might look like, you know, as well. One thing this offense could look like is having a mobile quarterback. Art Rooney joining the uh, chorus of Mike Tomlin quotes about the value of quarterback mobility. Uh, Rooney saying, quote, mobile quarterbacks are the wave of the future. Having mobility at that position is something that would be desirable, not just the wave of the future, Dave, but the wave of the present. It's on shore. Um, you know, the NFL's chock full of them. Rooney did say they didn't want a quarterback who is run first, just want someone who can scramble and kind of extend the play. All the things you and I have discussed over the last year or two. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we'll see who that name is. I think Marcus Mariota, the more we talk about it, the more I think about it, really is a name that makes a lot of sense here this offseason. One thing that Art Rooney said that he basically says every single year in terms of what this team needs to do to get better in 2022, run the ball and stop the run. I think he's very true and accurate on both those points. Um, Stopping the run usually has not been an issue. So that's kind of a new thing, but a very clear problem in 2021 for Pittsburgh, but running the ball kind of on that week or yearly uh, list of, of Art Rooney's things to fix and improve upon. Yeah, how many years running now has it been to fix the run? <laughs> <laughs> Too long. Right, and uh, you know, obviously the, uh, the 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 run defense didn't live up to uh, expectations, but you know, did have a lot of the injuries to go along in there with uh, with obviously with Tyson Alualu going down, and then uh, Stefan Tuitt not playing the whole season there. So uh, the directive coming out of his mouth seems to be. 
uh, let's 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 fix those trenches in there. And uh, you know, I, as a side note to that, he was asked about Stefan to it. They don't. He doesn't know anything new about Stefan to it. I think that's one area that you have us covering in this in this podcast here of one of mm-hmm. the things that 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 he said. So we'll go ahead and knock that one out. I, I guess as part of this uh, is the fact that they're going to plan on talking to Stefan to it in these next couple of weeks and and see where things go. They don't have an idea right now, but uh, I tell you, certainly is, is it adding up uh, too positive? I guess you could say, I mean, a lot of things obviously can change in these next week, in these next seven weeks. And really it's actually, I guess, less than seven weeks at this point now, but uh, they're going to have to figure this out really, really soon. And, and, and that could uh, obviously uh, change the direction uh, that this team uh, takes in, 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 in not only in free agency, but the, uh, the draft as well too. But uh, uh, to back up uh, from that, you know, Art Rooney saying, got to get better in the run, got to get uh, on both sides of the ball is not surprising. This team was what, I think 28th overall in the NFL and rushing yards per game and, 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 and yards per carry. And on the other side of the football and the defensive side, they were 32nd in the league. And, uh, yep. uh, in so many words, he says, uh, you know, you, you, you're starting from a bad place whenever you're, you're that low in those rankings on both sides of the football when it comes to the run there. Look, I, you know, you know me, you don't, uh, you don't necessarily have to run a lot, you know, to, to win. But when you do run, you do have to run successful because that certainly helps up, helps other avenues uh, of your offense. And, you know, as I always like to say, you run successful early. It gives you, it probably give you an opportunity to run successful late in games. And uh, we saw, unfortunately, too many times that uh, teams against the Steelers, what was it, four games, three or four games, uh, give up over 200 yards. Yeah, four. Uh, uh, net yards on the ground and you know uh luckily one of those uh, get, how many of those did they win just the one against the ravens i think right and they tied against detroit and they tied against detroit there so uh uh i i you know i feel comfortable in saying that would have gone a little bit different direction had they had guys like to it and alu alu in there but they didn't and mm-hmm. you know how many teams uh it really went drastic you know you you you, you know you would you would hope that a, a team is built to be able to overcome some injuries. I mean, look what the Baltimore Ravens went through uh, this season. I guess that's a good reason why they finished uh, what uh, uh, last in the league in explosive yeah. plays allowed, pa- passing plays allowed uh, there. So uh, those are just two injuries. Talking about uh, you know whatever whatever you want to term to it is, but uh, to it and Alualu that 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 this team never got past. And then on top of it, you have guys like Devin Bush just not playing well at all. Uh, and, you know, bring in a guy like Schobert who, who really didn't give you much of anything either. And then you have guys like uh, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick uh, with the meter running, <laughs> so to speak. It, it, look, that guy made some money by having to do that. You know, not that he wasn't going to get it anyway, but if there was any questions about Minka Fitzpatrick going into the 2021 season, it was, well, how's the guy against maybe – you know, tackling in the secondary and 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 helping out against the run. Well, he more than proved that with a hundred. What was a hundred twenty something? Uh, four, total, I think one two four. Yeah, I want to yeah, say one one two four total tackles and all like that, and being the last line of defense. So all you all you all you did in that aspect is give up a lot of grounds and uh, 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 a lot of yards on the ground, and then secure his spot uh, in, in, in market value overall. Yeah, 71 tackles of 10-plus yards this year, by far the most in football. The next closest stealer, 30 to 11. So Minka had more than double uh, of those kind of big chunk plays. And, of course, those are going to come from more DBs than, say, linebackers, but still 71 to 30 is 71 in itself. Incredible number. That drop off a of second place, just pretty uh, astounding on it. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know, but the more I hear, the more I listen to this, the fact that there's no answer kind of feels like an answer that he might not be coming back. And so, again, we'll just wait and see. Decision decision is his, and I'll respect it no matter what that comes to. But I'm getting the sense that he's not playing in 2022. Uh, who's that? Stephon Tewitt. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I'm starting to feel that way as well, too, unfortunately. So we'll see. Anything else that Rooney said? Talk about the quarterback room briefly. Did not rule out any options to acquire a quarterback, including a trade. But if you just kept it very vague, very open-ended, so I wouldn't read too much into those comments. And then just did praise Rudolph and Haskins. But certainly get a sense this team will be adding some external option in some form or fashion over the next three months. Uh, yep. I All right, Dave. Anything else here to talk about from Rooney, or does that kind of cover it? 
pretty well. Uh, what what do you think about his comments on the whole mobility thing and all like that? Yeah, he said they're the way with the future, and I you think Tomlin has made it clear, and Rooney's not making it clear. They want a quarterback who can move. Now, again, as Rooney said, I mentioned a couple minutes ago that they don't want a quarterback who was run first. They want someone who can just extend the play with his legs and be able to you know make plays with his arm because he's able to move outside the pocket or scramble around and break contain and things like that. So just kind of falls into what the Steelers have already been talking about. Right, and, and probably just more than anything, making sure you find somebody that can that, that, that can extend the play, right? Yeah, yeah, like I said, I mean, they want just somebody who can scramble and not have to run and carry the ball 20 times. They don't necessarily want or need Lamar Jackson or Kyler Murray, but just somebody who can keep the play alive when the pocket breaks down. All right, uh, what else did he do? Uh, was there anything else uh, t- very topical on that? What did what'd you think about uh, his comments on, uh, defensive, on, on Tomlin and defensive calls? Yeah, I didn't really know what to make of that. Um, it just seemed very kind of vague and generic. I forget the exact comment about, you know, we'll have to see what Tomlin does. And, you know, he didn't, you know, confirm Terrell Austin as interviewed to be DC along with potential external options. I very much doubt Patrick Graham's coming to Pittsburgh. He's getting head coach looks and I just can't see him coming to, to Pittsburgh. So um, didn't really quite get what Rooney was saying. Just kind of think deferred at the Tomlin. And so I think Austin, again, will be DC and the relationship and the dynamic really will be unchanged compared to, to last year. Uh, let's see his evaluation of offense and the coordinator, Matt Canada. We had a number of young players, rookies, uh, playing on offense this year. Look, we didn't achieve uh, the kind of offense that we would like to have, but we had some good moments. They kept us in a lot of games more than anything. We needed to be more consistent. We had a lot of games where we were good for a quarter or for a half, uh, but not really for four quarters. Well, certainly weren't the first two quarters. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. That's something Matt is going to want to address this off season. Uh, having so many young players, different pieces coming together, including a new coordinator. Uh, there were some challenges there that I think we tried to make the best of it, but again, we didn't meet all of our goals for sure. For sure. Art for sure. Yeah. Uh, what Understand about, uh, what about the comments about, you know, exhausting all avenues for a quarterback? Yeah, again, just keeping it open ended. Say they could trade, they could it could come any form or fashion, which is again the, the right approach right now for a team going through this process for the first time in, in eighteen years. So um, you know, it is draft or a you know, free agent more likely than to trade, yes, but they're not gonna close the door on, on anything and, and nor should they. From where you sit right now though, how, how how surprised would you be if this team did draft one in the first round? I mean, how, you know, after parsing all these comments that are out there and all uh, yeah. what kind of percentage would you put on them still potentially drafting a quarterback in the first round? I really can't put a number to it. And I think trying to parse the language is tough to do because they're keeping everything on the table. So really what is there to parse? Um, do you believe I, that everything like, like that really is on the table yeah. when it comes to draft, I guess? Yeah. Why would it not be? Why would you close doors on this kind of stuff? Whenever you need a franchise quarterback, you don't have one that much is obvious. You shouldn't be saying a hard no to really anything uh, right now. So I think it would be just smart, especially so so early in this process. Eventually doors will close up as you evaluate things. But right now in the draft, January 29th, as of this recording, you're not going to close that door. And what do you think about uh, Jay Glazier continually being out there? I think we hit on this just a little bit the other day, but I, I went ahead and wrote that up as well, too, the last couple of days as well, too. And, I mean, he, he is consistent, had been consistent on this about saying that I know they want a veteran. Uh, now, I guess you could twist that around and say, okay, well, I know they want a veteran now. That doesn't rule out them drafting a, you know, drafting a right. quarterback. But, but I, I guess you could parse that and say, I know they want a veteran for week one. I, I suppose you could you 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 could kind of parse that out that way there, but uh, I mean Jay Glazer's been on this on this wagon for quite a while about saying that Mike Tomlin does not not want want to start over with a rookie quarterback. Yeah, and I believe that I know how plugged in Glazer is to Tomlin, and so I think that's true. But as you said, it could be where you sign a veteran and draft a rookie, or just have Rudolph and Haskins in a rookie, or you know something like that. So it doesn't pre- preclude you from taking a, a quarterback again, the way that Tommy Maddox was the veteran and Charlie Batch was the veteran when they drafted Ben. So, um, you know, I think the favorite is our veteran will be starting week one, but again, I'm not saying no to anything. You bring in a rookie he plays well, then everything changes. All right. Uh, anything else that we are missing here, Alex? I think that's it. Anything we are, then I think maybe you and Tom or whoever you get on the show for Wednesday and Friday, will uh, be able to discuss that. So it's probably a good place for us to wrap up. 
All righty. So uh, why don't we just uh, uh, kind of leave open the end of the show here? And I, I will say real quick, though, again, be sure. And, and, and they're down there and probably wrapping up by the time people listen to this. But thank you to Josh and Owen and Mel. They're covering the Shrine Bowl, doing a great job, some great interviews and practice reports you guys should check out. And then for the week of the Senior Bowl, myself, Jonathan Hightrader, Tyler Wise, and Jacob Harrison uh, will be covering the Senior Bowl. And so we thank them for their time. Really excited for those guys to get down there, meet those guys in person, and just have a blast on Immobile and hopefully get some really good information out of it as well. Okay, welcome back to the Terrible Podcast. It is Monday. It is the day after the uh, NFL Championship Games. And uh, already talked uh, this morning with a taped conversation uh, with, uh, of course, Alex Kazora, who is now down in Mobile, Alabama, with three other guys from uh, uh, SteedersDepot.com ready to cover the Senior Bowl week and uh, have three others uh, uh, still out here in Las Vegas uh, covering the uh, wrapping up the end of the uh, East-West Shrine Bowl game. Uh, and usually around this time of year with, with people off to the games, I, I have a chance to talk uh, to one of our longtime contributors of the site. Man, I forget how long he's even been with me now, but it's been for a bit a while. I'm, of course, talking about the great Tom Mead. And Tom, welcome back to the uh, terrible podcast again. It's been a little bit uh, since you sat in, I think, uh, on a show there. People can follow Tom on Twitter at th. Mead three, all one word. And uh, uh, that's where we're at right now. So, Tom, welcome back to the Terrible Podcast. Thank you, Dave. I'm glad to be back. Uh, uh, excited to hear all the stuff that the guys are going to get down in uh, the Senior Bowl. And, and props to the work that uh, Dr. Mel, uh, Josh, and, and Owen have done at the, the, senior, or at the uh, East-West Shrine game. The information they're giving us is great. Absolutely it is. And boy, we've got some great film to go over from that event that I'm hope I'm sending out to you guys. Hopefully you're able to to uh, to look at that as well too. I know look, I, I, I stay way behind the rest of you guys because obviously Alex and I have to cover the Steeders throughout the season and uh, really starting this week and, and on into these next uh, in, into next week is when I really start trying to play catch up or being able to get a little caught up with you guys uh, when it comes to comes to you know these uh, these these draft prospects and all right now uh let's first tom start uh, first uh give them a, give everybody a quick overview uh how you came about uh how long you've been with steeders depot now and kind of what you do in the real world okay uh, in the real world i work for a uh health company um but i work from home which is fantastic uh I've been with Steelers Depot, I, uh, I think I just passed my anniversary a couple weeks ago, so a little over three years. I uh, did some work with a website called Inside the Pylon before that, and I also uh, assist uh, Dan Hatman um, at the, the Scouting Combine, uh, being a teacher's assistant for him. All right, fantastic. Well, uh, obviously, you've had some memorable appearances on this podcast before over the years as well, too. And I think the one that sticks out to me is uh, uh, kind of going over and identifying some some uh, some players at the uh, East West Shrine game back when it was in uh, down in Florida a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, one specifically, I think uh, you were the one that's, uh, that that turned Steelers Nation and really myself on to Alex Highsmith down there when he was coming out of uh, of Charlotte. And and uh, lo and behold, uh, not only uh, did the Steelers end up uh, drafting him that same year, uh, he obviously has become a starter for the team as well, too. So, uh, look, uh, you obviously probably have already listened to the uh, round table that uh, we did with the guys talking about the quarterback, ma- mainly focused on the quarterback class uh, last week. So, uh, within that, and obviously with the Senior Bowl getting underway this week, I kind of wanted to get your thoughts, Tom, and and I you know I know you haven't uh, you know probably gone way down deep into the tape on a lot of these guys because obviously it still is early in the process here, but kind of you know knowing you know listening to what we talked about the other day and then kind of you know uh, where are you at right now at uh, when it comes to this quarterback class and and guys that you could potentially see the the, the Steelers may be having interest in. Yeah, it's it's definitely an inter- interesting class with uh, really nobody standing out at the top. You know, usually there's one or two guys that teams are going to be fighting over, uh, but this class is a little different. Uh, with with I think there's parity within the class, but there's not really that standout guy. Now, 
obviously the the word of the day is mobility, right? We've mm-hmm. heard Mike Tomlin talk about that over and over again, and uh, that's that's going to be a main quality that they're looking for. Now, that doesn't mean a running quarterback. That just means a guy that can get out of the pocket and get extra yards if needed. So there's there's definitely a difference there that people need to to remember. But there's uh, there's four guys at the Senior Bowl that normally I would think are possibilities. Uh, the first guy I'd throw out there is Carson Strong, who is not the mobile guy, but he seems like he would be the Steelers quarterback if they were picking five years ago. You know, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the pocket guy with the big arm who can hit the long passes. Uh, but with his knee issue, he's probably going to be – he. Well, I'm not going to say taken off the table, but he's going to be scrutinized a little bit more than, than you know, than uh, we'd expect a pocket passer to be scrutinized. Um, on that same, the uh, national roster, they also have Desmond Ritter and Kenny Pickett. Both of those guys are four year starters. They both have mobility. Uh, they both have good size at six, three or taller. Um, Ritter, from what I've seen in his play, he's got, he, he's made some of those passes that are going to wow you. And then other times he makes silly mistakes, but He's got a big arm. He's got mobility. I can see him. I can see them having interest in him. Uh, Kenny Pickett is, you know, again, another guy with size and mobility. He's, he's an accurate passer, may not have as good a deep ball as, as some of the other guys have. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting to notice that on that roster, Ritter and, and Strong both have a receiver from their team. Hmm. Uh, so they'll have that advantage where Pickett does not have one of those guys. So that's interesting. And of course, one of them from Nevada being Romeo Dubs, and yeah. and uh, who's the Cincinnati kid they have there? Alec Pierce. Okay, that's right. Okay. Yep. Yep. And um, the other quarterback is uh, Sam Howell, who seems to be a bit of a forgotten guy. Uh, it, this time last year, you know, people were saying, well, if he came out, he'd be a high draft pick, and he well, he lost his receiver, so. If you look at his numbers from last year, this year, they didn't come down. They were basically the same numbers, but I think everyone was expecting a jump up from him. Uh, but he's an, you know, another player who uh, who's, can move around in the pocket, throws a good deep ball. He's thrown for over 10,000 yards in three years. He's 92 touchdowns, 23 interceptions. Uh, I believe the Steelers have already done some homework on him, so he's another one. Uh, I'd put up there with Ritter and Pickett as probably the top three guys that they might really be interested in. Uh, Obviously Malik will uh, Willis out of Liberty down there. And I think uh, Bailey, Bailey zap zappy, uh, 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 the other small school uh, kid kind of undersized quarterback threw for a heck of a bunch of yards, but uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty bad when, when he's the guy that probably has the, 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 the the biggest stats, but yet he's, he's probably considered number six on the list uh, 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 down there at mobile there. How would you rank as uh, from, from a Steelers perspective, of how uh, rank these guys just on a regular, you know, any team. Uh, give me the top four, maybe uh, if you're looking at it just as an overview from as any NFL team, and then rank maybe the top four that you think the Steelers would be interested in based on kind of what you think that they're looking for. Okay. Uh, okay. So for any team in the NFL, um, just off my thoughts and what I've seen, I would put Sam Howell first. Wow. Okay. Yep. Kenny Pickett second. Uh, Carson Strong third, and Ritter fourth. Um, now I think those guys have the most experience and would be able to transition best into uh, a. A starting role, if that was the case, for there's a lot of teams that are looking for quarterbacks now with you know retirements and and you know Jimmy G is going to be moving on and who knows. So there's going to be you know lots of teams looking for quarterbacks. So I think teams are going to look for experience uh, as a, as a a key component to uh, move move forward. I think uh, Willis is going to need some time to develop. And I, I you know if you're a a team drafting late. In the first or second round, 
and you already have an established guy and you can have Willis come in and learn for a year or two, that he probably be best going in that in that to one of those teams. Now for Pittsburgh out of those guys, uh I think I'd still stick with Sam Howell. Um follow him. I personally like Ritter more than Pickett, so I'd put Ritter two, Pickett three, and strong four if they decide, you know, if, if all if the, the uh, need, mobile yeah. guys are gone, yeah, and they decide the need's okay. You know, we've seen it with injuries before where teams do the research and, you know, a guy come with a knee issue comes in and plays 10 years and doesn't have any problems. So right. It, it, they keep saying mobility, so that pushes me away from Strong, and I know he's one of your favorite guys, but I, I can I can see Strong being the pick as well. You know, the thing with Strong, and he is, I mean, he's a guy I gravitate, and look, for, for me to, for me to have know that much more, that much about any college player that soon into a Steelers season uh, is, is something, but he, you know, he caught my eye, you know, watch, watching some games the previous season late at night and all, all like that. And I, I, I kind of obviously followed his career close and, you know, him being in Nevada here, I'm in Las Vegas, it gives you an extra reason. And then, uh, you know, to stay up late and you get those games late at night on top top of it uh, it was just kind of a perfect storm brewing but even I kind of you know uh, as much as I liked his arm his ability to make all throws his smartness and all like that it quickly you know especially this year it, it, it became apparent to me that man that knee's got to check out man right you know, that that knee has absolutely got to check out and one thing that uh, when Dr. Mel gets back from uh, from Las Vegas and all there's already quite a few a few reports out there about uh, about what Carson Strong uh, went went through with his knee and obviously he's going to get a lot of questions about that during uh, during the senior bowl uh, uh, process this week as well too but I think Dr. Mel's going to uh, put together a nice little post on that as well too that ought to make for some interesting reading about where she maybe projects uh, uh, his 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 knee to go and you know, it, you know, here's hoping that his worst was what we saw on tape last year, uh, right? Uh, and, 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 and you know, and maybe he 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 has a lot of room to improve uh, from there because if that knee does check out and they feel that he does have some level of mobility, which is hard to imagine right now, just based off the tape that that I I know I've looked at. You know, if it can get much better than that, then yeah, I think uh, I think just overall Carson Strong at that point would would have a great shot at being the first first quarterback off the board. But if he doesn't have that mobility and if that knee is a concern, then yeah, that 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 certainly is going to drop him off the ball off the board or down the board quite quite uh, you know probably in the second or third round uh, mm -hmm. potentially at that at that point there. What is it that you like best uh, that that you have how? the number one kind of on this, on the Steelers board uh, uh, there, what, what traits is it about him that, that you'd like most uh, uh, about how? Uh, to me, well, just watching him, he, he reminds me of a, uh, an NFL quarterback with his uh, movement within the pocket, how he can extend plays to the outside. Uh, he could throw the deep ball. Um, you know, when he when he had a couple of good receivers last year, he looked really good. And when he didn't have the receivers this year, he, he looked bad. And and that's happened with other quarterbacks in the past too. Um, and but I, I there was something people liked about him last year, and and I'm not sure why they're not as high as on him this year. It could be like uh, the Justin Herbert syndrome, where he went back for one more year and people didn't like him as much all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I, to me, he looks like an NFL quarterback, and uh, I, I think he'd be a good fit. And I mean, he's not the biggest guy; he's listed, I think, at six one two twenty. Uh, but you know, quarterbacks seem to be getting smaller these days, so right. who knows, you know, what the right measurements are anymore. Yeah, I know it's hard. I, I know, especially for me, because I, I love measurements. I love uh, I love that part of the process. I love uh, getting the uh, 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 the P Spark scores and 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 the relative athletic scores, and then looking up over history and and. But yeah, I think you're right. I I, I think National Football League is now back in, in into a stage where you know they don't they don't so mind not having the prototypical 
six four uh, quarterback there, especially when you look at some of these quarterbacks now, you know, uh, and, and the mobility that they have along with it. And we've heard Mike Tomlin talk about that all off season. What is it about? Now, look, uh, you, you uh, get ready for some hate mail, Tom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 talk about you know. Obviously, we have a lot of Pitt fans, and and a lot you know a lot of people are trying to put uh, Kenny Pickett in a, in a Steelers uniform here. Uh, and you're not as high on him. In fact, you know, for the most part, I think most of our Steelers Depot gang isn't probably as high on Pickett as maybe most of the uh, local media guys or, or, or even national media guys. Uh, what is it about Pickett that, that, that has you the most concerned? Uh, well, the biggest concern for me, and uh, it, honestly, this is based on a lot of what I read because uh, I haven't seen a lot of Pickett, but it, from what I understand, he doesn't have the arm strength that some of the other guys do. And you can get away with that to an extent in the NFL, but you you have to be extremely accurate, which he is, he's accurate, but you've got to be able, be able to hit, you know, the windows are going to be much smaller. And if you don't have the arm strength to fit it in there, it, it makes things a lot difficult, a lot more difficult. So, you know, does he have a chance to be, you know, a starter and, and a good one? Yeah, I, I think so, but I I'd prefer someone with a with a bigger arm. So mo- mostly his arm strength is, is, is the biggest thing. How, how, how do you like him from kind of an X's and O's and ability to extend play? I mean, obviously we've seen you know you know watching watching enough pit games over the years here. Uh, I mean we've seen him be able to be mobile and probably mobile enough, obviously for what uh, kind of the Steelers or at least what Mike Tomlin and, and, and Art Rooney the second kind of laid out here uh, towards the end of the season here. So you're fine with the mobility and the pocket uh, uh, presence. And, and, and the X's and O's uh, factor is more of can he make all the throws and can he have the velocity on the throws? Yeah, yeah. Like, again, like if just from what I've seen, uh, um, I think he moves around uh, well. I think he can uh, get the extra yards running if he has to. I think he extends outside the pocket well. Uh, as far as reading a defense, you know, I'd have to see like a lot of all 22 to see what he's doing from behind to see if he's actually reading and is he missing guys and then creating plays? And and that could be you know the same for all these quarterbacks. But yeah, the only th- it's it's for me it's the arm strength with him right now. But I, I think he has plenty enough mobility to to do what the Steelers are what I expect the Steelers are going to want to do next year. So you're going to be glued to the old computer like I am this week. Uh, uh, definitely watching some of the stuff that come out of Mobile and all of the four guys that we got down there and the, the velocity reports and, and, and all like that. Because, I mean, it's going to be a big week for uh, at least I, – I have a feeling that – uh, people in the industry, the scouts already know. That's why I mm-hmm. get. Uh, that, that, that's why I find it funny to hear the term "flying up draft boards." You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> because it feels like the scouts and all in the NFL teams probably already have a good idea where these guys on the on the draft board. They just want to get some confirmation on some things uh, throughout this process. You know, throughout the combine and, and obviously these these uh, the Senior Bowl and Shrine Bowl games as well too. But uh, for us on the outside. It, you know, it's the first time to see a lot of these kids up close and personal. So I guess that's where the whole the old uh, flying up the draft board uh, 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 term comes from. But it's going to be an interesting week when it comes to those quarterbacks uh, for sure. All right, uh, now kind of moving on. You know, we talked about the quarterbacks there. Uh, you know, you've done an overview, I think a, a broad brush kind of look at players at both the uh, East West Shrine Bowl and and the Senior Bowl and kind of match to you know to kind of guys the Steelers you think would have uh interest in let's start with uh uh the uh the Shrine Bowl and all how about you know why don't you go over kind of a list of names that you've kind of developed that you think you know the Steelers could potentially be the most interested in and and guys to watch the you know the rest of the pre-draft process here okay well I'll start with the in the middle of the offense that the, the center position you know obviously it was a big struggle for Kendrick Green this year and they're going to be looking for someone to uh, to to possibly replace him or at least give him competition in there. And uh, there were three names that came up in the East West Shrine game that interest me. But as I'm seeing with a lot of the centers from college, there there's a lot of guys under 300 pounds. And mm-hmm. I don't know if it's going to be like the quarterbacks with their size coming down that the center size come down more and more teams run a lot of zone, but 
you know, it, it's okay if you're small and and can execute, but if you can't move guys, then the, you're going to have troubles. And, um, you know, Alec Lindstrom from Boston College, he might be the number two or three center on a lot of boards out there. Um, but he's he came in at 6'3", 294, with uh, arms just over 32 inches. Now, that's not ideal. Uh, you know, you want some more length there. You want some more... Uh, weight, um, but he's a three-year starter, two-time All-ACC. Um, from what I've read, he's a very technical blocker, which so that means he executes in the zone blocking scheme very well. But is he going to be able to move that? You know, the big defensive tackles in the uh, NFC North one-on-one if he has to. And you know, it, you're going to have to watch the tape and find out. But being there's some there's some big defensive tackles at the. Uh, uh, at the East West Shrine game that it, it, he'll, it'll be good to see what he can do against. Um, and another guy is Luke Wattenberg from Washington who plays guard and center. Uh, he's another one listed at 6'4", 293, but he's got uh, over 34-inch arms, so he's got a little uh, length advantage there. Uh, he's a four-year starter. Uh, he's got some versatility along the line, like I said. Uh, he's also played some left tackle and left guard, uh, but again – at 293, is he only a zone blocking scheme center? Um, the one guy that fit the NFL standards, uh, I took a look at all 32 centers from the NFL and got an average of their height, weight, and arm length. And it was about 6'3 three and a half, 309 with over 33 inch arms. And Brock Hoffman from Virginia Tech is. Six oh six three and a half three ten with thirty three and one eighth inch arms. So he fits the mold there. He's got big ten and a half inch hands. Wow. He's got forty four starts at guard and center between Coastal Carolina and Virginia Tech. Um, uh, I think he can fit in a gap power scheme uh, effectively. Uh, he, from what I've read, he's very competitive and plays to the whistle. He's got a little nasty to his game. So you know. Pittsburgh needs that on the offensive line, so he might be someone they might uh, take an extra look at. All right, who else? Uh, uh, what other positions uh, 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 other than maybe center? Okay, there was uh, on the defensive side of the ball. There's uh, okay. The first guy that is our Marquand McCall from Kentucky. Now, during these down the season, he was listed at 379 pounds. Oh lord! Yeah, uh, uh, he's measured now. He's down to 346, which is good because it, uh, you know, it'll help him. He's only able six two and a half. He's got 33 inch arms. Um, he, he wasn't very productive as, uh, as far as tackles go. I think he had 57 career tackles, 10 and a half for a loss. But he's that nose tackle that can occupy two guys. And keep those linebackers clean so they can make plays. So if you get that immovable object in the middle of the defensive line, you know that's going to help everybody. Um, uh, another guy that caught my eye, and I, uh, I hope I don't screw up his name uh, too much, is uh, I've, 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 I've made a career out of screwing up people's names. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, Ayoma Awuzariki out of Iowa State. Um, Six five and a half, three nineteen with thirty five and one eighth inch arms. He's got the look of that five tech position that sure the Steelers does. always look for, right? Yeah, uh, I I came across I yeah, and, and I'm I'm still playing catch up, but we have some tape of the uh, the 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 uh, offensive line, defensive line drills uh, from the first two days there, and he is a guy that that I I, I don't he wasn't you know. He wasn't eye popping impressive in in, uh, in in the drills, but I, I think he held his own and, and, and had a couple of good reps in there. And I went and looked at his his measurables there at 6054, 319, 35 and 1 8 inch arms and 85 and 5 8 inch uh, uh, wingspan there. And man, you want to talk about guys that, that it, just from a measurable standpoint, that match up what the Steelers look for at those five tech. Four eye mm-hmm. guys. Uh, he is it. Now I have not. Have you watched any tape on him whatsoever? I got to see a little bit of him watching Tyler Linderbaum. Okay. Or yeah, Linderbaum, and uh, he he had some good reps against them, like the power rushes. Uh, you know, uh, there's there's 
technical work that needs to be done there. And I think he had a breakout year this year. I think he might have had like nine of his 15 sacks this year. Mm. So he might be just coming into his own. Um, but there's definitely some potential there. And I don't think he, he'll probably be a late day three guy, I'm guessing. But um, he's definitely got that build of the five tech that the Steelers like. Uh, did they did they use him more as a as a defensive tackle in 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 that front uh, uh, or or did he does he have many reps as kind of a four I or a five do you think I think uh, I think he uh, if I remember correctly he was more of the four I five most of the time okay and passing downs they kick him into the zero and put him right over the center okay so there that ought, that ought to be a pretty good if you you know three 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 sections of or three games of his tape ought to be a pretty good look at maybe you know what what he would project at right yeah I definitely think yeah and they did play uh you said they uh, obviously they played Iowa because him at Iowa State there so that all that'll be a real good game to watch mm-hmm. there that that's definitely a guy I have circle there and talking about uh, going back to the the the, the, the uh, uh, the, the, the defensive tackle that you talked about out of, uh, what was it? Kentucky, uh, Mar- yeah. Mar- Mar- yeah, that guy's a huge, I mean, uh, nose tackles these days though. I mean, where would you kind of gauge kind of a guy like that? Is that a, 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 a day three guy? Most definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, his conditioning is going to be a question. If he can keep his weight down, it's going to be a question. If he can get his weight down to, you know, 330 or below, will that improve his pass rush? You know, he might be able to get, from what I understand, he can get some push inside, but it's, you know, he's not a three down guy. But um, I think he, yeah, I think he would definitely be a a day three guy, uh, maybe mid day three. And more of a run plugger right now than anything? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Uh, Anybody else on our defensive line? Uh, well, there's a couple edge guys um, that, that uh, caught my attention. Uh, Jeffrey Gunter from Coastal Carolina, uh, 6'4", 259 with 33 and a half inch arms. Uh, he had 169 tackles, 38 and a half tackles for a loss, 17 sacks, and nine forced fumbles. Um, he's a, a length and strength guy. He's a, he's a power pass rusher. Um, Probably, yeah, probably be in that day three range as well. And, uh, you know, Steelers don't need a starter there, obviously, but they're going to need some depth. Um, and he was one of the guys that caught my attention, along with, uh, and another name I'm going to screw up, uh, the kid from Houston, David Anani. Uh, he's only 6'2, 251, but had 34 and 3 8 inch arms, uh, which is crazy length at 6'2. Uh, he's a guy that plays in a two point stance. He's got some explosiveness. Um, if he can learn to use that length as leverage to go along with the explosiveness, that would be, uh, you know, something that would help him along the way. He had 20 and a half sacks in college. Um, so the six, two might throw some people off as far as being an edge guy, but you know, he looks like he's got some pass rush ability. Yeah. The Steelers have had no issue with kind of those squattier kind of, uh, those guys under six, four. Now that oh, over the years, they have seemed to gravitate a little bit, uh, uh, more into kind of the, I guess the six, four kind of two fifty five range, uh, along in there. So, uh, uh, that, that's a guy definitely I'll have to watch some film on. I tell you, just sticking out and running through the, uh, the tape, uh, the last couple of nights here, that alley F- F- Fayad out of Western Michigan, <laughs> mm-hmm. six six two two forty eight. I you know he probably needs a little bit of sand in his pants there. Uh, at at two forty eight, probably could stand to gain I don't know six seven eight pounds there. Uh, obviously doesn't have a lot of length at six foot two, and and his arm length I think is gonna uh, gonna 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 be a little bit of a question with him too at thirty two. But boy, has he got that? Uh, he likes that uh, that. Uh, 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 Dwight Freeney spin, man. He loves to use that, uh, try, try to set that spin up in his repertoire. And that's been, I think he's won a couple of ways in some reps that I've uh, seen uh, down there at the East West Shrine game. So that, that would be another one. All right. So is that kind of your, uh, your, your list of uh, Shrine Bowl games, Tom? Yeah, or, that, that's or the people? list I had there. There's, there's some de- defensive backs that, you know, that, that Steelers are obviously going to need some help there with safety and corner. So, it, I mean, all, the whole area should be, uh, taking a look at but most of those guys are kind of small um so it's it, i think they'd want to look for someone more size than you know in other places than here 
Okay, and I think uh, uh, the late Quentin Lake is a guy that uh, probably sticking out down there that can maybe be a, a box safety type. Uh, that, that that he might be one of the better uh, defensive backs from what I'm understanding so far there. And you know, a couple of wide receivers obviously are are, are 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 sticking out down there. The uh, the uh, the Rambo kid, I think, out of Miami. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the. Uh, who was it? The uh, uh, the Tulsa wide receiver there, but I think he might end up being <clears throat> more of a either a slot or or an or an X type receiver there. And then the Baylor kid, uh, yeah. uh, what was his name? Uh, Thornton uh, is is another one. But the thing with with Thornton is, uh, I'm I'm really interested to see Thornton run <clears throat> at the mm-hmm. combine uh, because there's a couple of clips and a couple of the, the big explosive plays that he's had where it's hard to kind of really – you know how it is, Tom, with that with the TV tape and even the all-22 tape, man. It's so hard sometimes to judge that 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 raw straight-line speed on there. But there was one to catch it even even on the uh, on the TV tape of him. It was like, man, how the hell did he get down the field, you know, that, mm-hmm. that, that, that quick there. So Thornton and, – and Thornton, uh, even though he had, I think, under eight-inch hands – I think he only had like four drops, and I have not researched those drops. That's obviously something I'll, you know I'll do during the process here. But I, right. I think as as far as wide receivers go, uh, it, where where are you at in far as far as the Steelers need in wide receivers? Do you uh, you know uh, wh- where are you on on a guy like Chase Claypool right now? And and obviously we 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 probably both think that they're going to lose James Washington during the off season. This team mm-hmm. obviously did not draft a wide receiver last year, so. Uh, if you're a betting man, you're going to bet that the Steelers draft at least one wide receiver this year. What should that wide receiver look like for the Steelers? Uh, first thing, I want him to be able to separate. Um, whether he plays in the slot or outside, we need people that get open and get open fast. And secondly, there's got to be speed. He's got to be able to take a ball and and make it explosive. Take the five-yard pass and make it. 20 yards the Steelers are severely lacking at the weird wide receiver position at speed uh, Deontay Johnson has great quickness but he's not the fastest guy Claypool can run fast really straight but he's you know the way he struggled catching the ball last year was very frustrating now is that something he can prove on absolutely and I'm hoping he can especially if the Steelers lose Washington and possibly Juju as well they don't have much behind that so they're gonna need people to fill those spots I am very biased against the measurements uh, sometimes, and, it, and it's a bias I'm, I'm very cognizant of, and I'm trying my best not to, you know, I'm trying to watch the tape first before I go look at, at the measurables on some right. of these guys, but when, but when I'm the one that's having to post a lot of this stuff up to the site, my curiosity just gets over me, and I go straight down the list looking at, 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 at things that you know, uh, uh, pluses and minuses of that, man, I cannot stand. And this is another kid. I probably have no business watching as much as I have, uh, uh, before the draft season started. There were two kids that I've watched a whole heck of a lot of film on. Well, really three, I guess if you count Romeo dubs, uh, as part of that, uh, Carson strong, uh, Nevada uh, connection. So I knew a, a quite a bit about him, but that Devin, uh, Tompkins out of, U- out of Utah state, man. Yeah. Uh, I cannot, I, I you know I every every free moment that I that I get, which is not a lot, I try to pull up a Utah State game and 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 and, and go through his stuff. I mean the, the kid's like five eight, hundred and fifty five pounds, but he <laughs> right. but he but he plays like he's six four uh one one eighty two, you know. Uh is there anything is there anything to that with with him? Have you uh, wa- have you watched any of them? I've only seen a, a, a bit of the highlights, most of the stuff that you put out there. Now, I, I'm with you with the bias when I see those really short guys. Like, I kind of turn away, and I don't want to look at those guys. But um, it, It's hard to do, though. I mean, it's, it's it, easy to do, right? It, it, it is. It's really easy to do. But I'm, I'm of the, 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 the inkling that what he does on tape is much more important than how he measures. Sure. Right? Some people play – there's big guys that play much smaller than he does. So what you're able to do on tape, and if you can do that against quality opponents – I mean, speed speed wins. You know, the right. NFL is full of speed, and if you have speed, your teams are going to take a chance on you and let you try and make plays. And the Steelers need one of those guys. 
Man, that that kid. So uh, <laughs> that uh, that I was yeah. telling Alex about the uh, the Idaho. Uh, I mean uh, Iowa State versus uh, I think it was New Mexico State. Man, if, if, if people get a chance to watch, and it's it's just not that game uh, either. You know, they do some end around stuff with him, and they do mm-hmm. some wide receiver screen stuff with him, and that guy just takes off. I mean, like a like a bullet. And even though he's even though he's five eight, man, he can climb the ladder. He's gonna. He's got. There's no way this kid doesn't jump 40 inches i i i, I don't think uh, uh with a vertical jump there but I, I just wanted to kind of get your take on him because he's a, one of those other guys that i i just can't i can't stop watching <laughs> yeah uh, like i said i haven't seen enough but now you got me interested interested so i'm gonna have to take a look all right uh, let's go to uh some 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 senior bowl kids that that uh you're really looking forward to watching this week tom that you think the steelers might, might have a lot of interest in uh non-quarterbacks of course because we've already talked about them right so uh kudos to the senior bowl staff because all the past few years they've gotten so much like the, the the increase in talent year over year has just gotten so much better and i think they from what i read they only had like four guys turned down invitations this year so the crop of players here is really really good so i uh, hope everybody's gonna watch um let's see the first and, and, one, and let's you've, been, you've, the linebackers. you've been down there as part okay. of that process as well too in the past right you just couldn't make it this year but you've been, yeah, down. I've been down there a couple of times yeah. okay all right go ahead um, well, th- it's funny. The one thing that always amazes me down there is the size of everyone. I'm not big. I'm five foot nine. I, I, and only then was I eye to eye with Mike Vrabel. Like that's how big all these guys are. They're monstrous. Mm. Um, but yeah, so all right, the first, uh, linebackers, right. There's definitely a need there. Um, uh, hopefully Devin Bush gets back. And, and to where he wants to be, but they're going to need someone else to probably play next to him. Uh, we already have a couple reports on these guys. Alex did one on Chad Muma from Wyoming. Um, 266 tackles, 19 tackles for a loss, uh, three interceptions, and he returned two of them for touchdowns. Um, Darian Beavers, I think uh, Jonathan did uh, a report on him. He's uh, listed at 6'3", 242. So he's got the the size of, of the the buck linebacker, um, 230 tackles, 13 and a half sacks, 27 and a half tackles for a loss. Uh, Devin Lloyd from Utah, who he's probably going to be a first round guy, so they might not take a linebacker in the first round, but you never know. But he's uber productive with 43 tackles for a loss, and he also returned two picks for touchdowns this year. Uh, you know, 256 tackles, guy that plays all over the place. Uh, and the one other one is the guy I did the report on, Quay Walker from Georgia, who uh, is basically a – he's only a one-year starter, um, but he's listed at 6'4", 240. Um, he's, you know, that length would be very hard for teams to throw over. Uh, he, only one full year of starting, as I said. Um, he's, it's impressive burst and acceleration. Uh, he's got speed to go sideline to sideline. I think he can be a three-down linebacker. Um, so I think the linebacker group is going to have uh, those four names that you should definitely pay attention to. Okay. Um, next, well, well, since we were just talking about wide receivers, there's uh, I, I honestly listed about seven or eight guys here who um, who are – you know, big play guys or speed guys, something – the splash play guys that um, the, the team was lacking this year. Uh, let's see. Uh, Romeo – your guy Romeo Dubes. Right. Uh, 6'2", 200 pounds, speed and explosiveness, uh, separates well, gets yards after the catch. Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think he's going to run? You think he's going to run uh, uh, sub 4'5"? Like 4 uh, four, 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 six, something like that or what? Or do you think he's going to be in a four three range? No, I I I probably put him in the four fours. Okay. Um, but, I mean, you never know when these on the what they're running on and you know the combine and whatnot. But I I, I mean probably low low to mid four fours I think would be right in his range. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. So Alec Pierce from Cincinnati six three two thirteen. Uh, he averaged over seventeen yards per catch. He's got speed and ball skills. Uh, he's not 
great after the catch, but he can make the big catch down the field. Um, Christian Watson from North Dakota State, 6'5", 208. That's Jonathan's uh, crush right now. Or, uh, or no, Tyler, <laughs> yes, is, Ty, yeah. Ty, Tyler Wise, I think, is the one that's uh, got, got, got the crush on him right now. Yeah, I think Tyler does, and Jonathan jumped on the bandwagon. Oh, I got him. it, uh, got it. Yeah, good vertical speed, makes the tough catch. You know, everyone lo- loves these small school guys that come out. So, um, yeah, but at 6'5", if he can run like a deer, then he's going to turn some heads. Um, Jahan Dotson from Penn State. Not as big as the other guys, 5'11", 184. Uh, good root runner, creates separation, and you know makes the big catch uh, when, you, when you need it. Uh, Calvin Austin III from Memphis. He's one of those small guys, 5'9", 162. Uh, kind of like a Rondale Moore. Uh, 156 receptions, over 2,500 yards, 16 yards per catch. Uh, he also carried the ball eight times in his career for three touchdowns and averaging 21 yards a carry. So he's got the speed to make things happen once they, once they get him the ball. Uh, Trey Turner from Virginia Tech, 6'2", 190, uh, over 2,200 uh, yards receiving, 17 yards per catch. Uh, he also ran the ball 53 times, which is a lot for a, a wide receiver wow. for uh, – 456 yards he's projected uh, to play in the slot or outside um and the last two i'll give you are both from smu um danny gray is a juco transfer he played two years at smu uh in those two years he had 82 catches for 1200 yards 15 yards per reception and 13 touchdown he's uh fast he's uh got ball skills he's the uh slant screen go guy kind of like uh Claypool is you know that the, the only those certain routes that he really runs so he's more of a, a Z type receiver and uh Reggie Roberson Jr who's 6 foot and 200 he caught my eye like 2 years ago uh watching someone else um had a he blew out his knee uh, so he kind of, he may have, um, either lost the step or hasn't recovered that step yet. He looked a little bit, uh, slower this year, but you know, he had over uh, 174 receptions, 2,700 yards, 24 touchdowns. Uh, and, but he was explosive and able to, you know, able to get over the top of defenders. So, you know, like we were saying, Pittsburgh needs some speed. They're going to need a receiver. There's a lot of guys playing in this game that they can take a look at and hopefully find, you know, maybe one or two guys to fill spots as needed. All right. What about uh, offensive linemen there? You know, uh, the big question is, is, uh, you know, you have Trey Turner probably not going to be back. What the heck's going to happen at center? Uh, Chiquama Corfor is a, is an unrestricted free agent. He could be out the door there. I mean, they could go, they can end up with another two uh, uh, offensive linemen in this draft very easily uh, if, if they, you know, you depending on how things play out free agency. Uh, who, who are some of the top guys at the senior bowl that, uh, I mean, Zion Johnson's got to lead that list, right? Boston College kid. <laughs> He's the first guy I have on the list, yeah. 6'3", <laughs> 316. Uh, from what I've read, he's a very good pass blocker. Not just good, a very good pass blocker. Uh, he's got a powerful core and a good anchor. Um, you know, he's got that size of a, of a, a guy who's going to be able to move people. Um, there's, uh, I think along with Lindstrom, the center, I think, uh, there's at least, uh, one other offensive line from Boston college in this draft. So there, there's, there's definitely talent coming out of there. And, uh, Zion Johnson's going to be definitely a guy to keep an eye on. Um, let's see who else, uh, Darian Kennard from Kentucky. Uh, he played right tackle for them, 6'5", 345. Some look at him as a guard uh, as well, so he might be able to fill either that right guard or right tackle spot. Um, he's a, a, a strong, gets push, gap power scheme guy. Um, someone, you know, if at either spot, he would he would be uh, helpful there. Um, let's see, Max Mitchell from Louisiana. Uh, right tackle, 6'5", 300 pounds. He's played both uh, tackle spots. He may be more of a zone fit, but um, I've read some good things uh, about him. People seem to be uh, higher on him. Some some people seem to be higher on him, so uh, 
he'd be definitely someone to look at. Uh, Cade Mays uh, from Tennessee. He started. Uh, he's played his first two years at Georgia before transferring to Tennessee. Um, he played with his brother. His brother was the center. And Cade, May, Cade Mays has starts at left tackle, left guard, right guard, and right tackle. So he's got experience all across the line. Uh, six foot six, three hundred twenty-five pounds. Um, I think he was. Uh, um, yeah, I think he's a very smart uh, blocker. Uh, I, there's, I, I can't wait to watch him because there's something drawing me to his name. Like there's going to be something good there. So I'm hopeful uh, to see what he can do. And uh, let's see. The last one I'll give you is Chris Paul from Tulsa. He's, uh, I think he played right tackle there, but he's also one of the guys considered possibly as a guard. Um, he he played uh, right tackle for the last two years. Played uh, left guard and right guard each for a year. Uh, his uh, he, his uh, qualities include good strength. He's got very active hands. He's a little bit older at 24, um, so that might keep some people away but for me i think of guys on a five-year deal and that's it like after five years i'm not i'm i don't really think about the age so um but there's definitely there's a lot of guys in that center right guard right tackle area that the the steelers can look at that uh might give them some help what about uh uh you know may, maybe a five tech uh or you know kind of a four i five tech that you're keeping your eye on uh down at the senior bowl possible uh, let's see here. That's... Or, or any co- cornerbacks or, or strong safety types, maybe. Oh, well, yeah. You want to talk about cornerbacks. Like, uh, so th- they evidently took a mold of six foot one ninety and just popped out a bunch of guys because there's a <laughs> whole bunch. I have, uh, five of the four of the five guys I have listed here at just for corner are all listed at six foot or right around one ninety. Um, Roger McCreary out of Auburn. Um, if, 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 if you read about him, people are very high on him for his man coverage skills. He's, uh, a good press cover guy. Uh, he's a willing tackler. He can play outside or inside. Uh, he's had six career interceptions and 30 pass breakups. Mm. Uh, I've, I've, there's a lot of people that I've seen that are high on him already. Uh, Mario Goodrich. Out of Clemson, six foot one ninety. Uh, he's got good length. He's uh, plays an aggressive physical coverage. Uh, he only had one really good year, um, but um, you know, the, the length combination and you know the ball skills are are something that uh, teams are going to be interested in. Uh, Darion Kendrick out of Georgia, same six foot one ninety, seven career picks and fourteen pass breakups. Uh, he's raw and probably a better fit for a zone corner. So he may not be one of the Steelers would be interested in, but, uh, I put him on the list anyway. Uh, the other corner I have is Alante Taylor from Tennessee, six foot one ninety three. He's another guy, uh, who's better in man coverage. He's got very good length and, uh, uses his hands well at the line of scrimmage. So those four DBs, all six foot one ninety range, all with ball skills, with length. Uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen with Joe Hayden? And and uh, either way, you can never have enough corners. So th- this is going to be a position of focus as well. Um, there are a couple safeties I have. Uh, there's a couple. Or there's maybe just one. Uh, Leon O'Neill from Texas A&M, six one two ten. Uh, 161 tackles, six interceptions, 12 pass breakups, 10 tackles for a loss. He's the uh, athletic downhill, likes to hit you kind of guy. Uh, someone who probably end up being a box safety. Um, uh, and Steelers, if you know, if they don't re-sign uh, Edmonds, they're going to need a safety to play back there. So he'll definitely be a guy of interest as well. Uh, you know, the thing with uh, uh, Kella Witherspoon and the way he came on late, I you know, uh, I think mm. I, I think the Steelers should try to re-sign him. I don't think they should break the bank with him. I don't think they. I think they got to be careful uh, with uh, with the guaranteed money. Look, he did some nice things in coverage, but you really kind of worry about that kid and 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 
getting that money and then <laughs> worrying about him wanting to stick his face in the fan, you know, because right. yeah. I, I, none of that, uh, the, those kind of tigers don't change their stripes very often. And even, <laughs> even in the limited time that he played for the Steelers last year, there were issues with him making some, I think some business decisions, uh, uh, there when it comes to tackle, I don't think that's going to change on him. So yeah, you are probably going to need the guy that can cover and get you to, I mean, look, you, uh, the guy came on and ended up leading the team in interceptions with three. So you, you know, you you got to be careful with the criticism of him because taking the football away from the other from from the offense is key, and he he certainly did that. But on the flip side, you know, how is this guy going to stand up as a as as an every down player, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, and uh, there's sorry, there's one other defensive back I want to mention. That's Kobe Bryant out of Cincinnati. Okay. Um, a lot of the attention goes to Sauce Gardner because he was he's very good. But uh, on the other side, Bryant had nine picks and 35 pass breakups in his career. He's 6'1", 198. I like the size. Uh, like his competitiveness. So he's another one. You know, Like I said, Gardner gets all the attention, but he's pretty good as well. Uh, you've already, uh, uh, and, and obviously you're going to have a lot more thoughts on a lot more of these players after the senior bowl gets and you start diving into the tape here. So I don't want to spend too much more time on that. But I know you've already profiled uh, at least a couple for a site, for the site uh, for SteelersDepot.com. And I think you got another one on the way about to be posted. Uh, you already talked a little bit about Quay Walker out of, out of Georgia. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll stand on what you had to say about him. Uh, Linderbaum, boy, that's a mm. guy that... Uh, 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 at at this point now, I think in the process has become a little of, of a polarizing guy. Uh, look, uh, it, it wasn't hard to miss ask this guy just from the uh, uh, highlight standpoint from from Iowa throughout the season, and that's really all I knew about this kid uh, uh, up into uh, up until recently. And uh, you know, obviously wearing that that black and gold of Iowa uh, uh, <laughs> make, makes yeah. it makes it kind of easy to kind of uh, portray that kid in, in, in a Steelers uniform. Uh, and a nasty finisher, a guy that that uh, man when he gets on when he gets a hold of you, look out. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I think as your profile. You know, stated on him, and you probably—I don't know how much hate mail you got for that one, but uh, <laughs> <I got> uh, <laughs> some nasty comments about him in, in the comments uh, there. But uh, um, Linderbaum's probably not the first rounder that a lot of people make him out to be. You know, obviously, there's there, there's a chance he does go in the first round, but it, it, there's a there's a lot of buyer beware with him, is there not? I agree, and I put him as a, a late first round pick, and that was kind of contingent on how he measures. Um, it, he, 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 there's no other way to say it. he's undersized. Okay, at, at at 290 pounds, and that's what he's estimated at. But that's what he's listed at by Iowa. He could come in at 280 at the measurements, uh, and I would not be shocked because the, you can't trust the college, uh, right. you know, numbers. But you know, he, he definitely has talent. Like you said, his hand strength is great. When he locks onto guys, he can sustain blocks, which is, you know, for big runs, uh, that's important. The, the the middle of the Steelers offensive line had trouble sustaining blocks to keep those holes open. He plays with great balance. and He, he stays uh, on his feet, though, doesn't he, unlike Kendrick Green? Absolutely. Like, you can see his wrestling background where his core strength is very good. He doesn't get pushed around a lot. Uh, I watched the, uh, the game against Kentucky when he played that, uh, McCall, that 379 pound defensive tackle. And there was a couple plays where McCall kind of just ragdolled him, like just pushed him back and forth, but he never went down. He still held his, 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 you know, stayed on his feet. Um, but that, uh, for me, the issue with him was when faced with one-on-one blocks with, you know, bigger defensive tackles, the Michigan game comes to mind. He did not move them. He could stalemate and stay with the guy, but uh, the Michigan, uh, I can't think of his name right now, but the Michigan defensive tackle number 58 was able to shed him and make plays at the, at the point of attack. If he's not able to move guys, uh, you know, be able to move defensive tackles one-on-one, he's going to struggle some. Uh, you know, if you're going to try and use him in a uh, power running scheme, um, the past couple years, 
there was guys like, uh, you know, you mentioned him possibly not being a first rounder, and I, I can totally see him falling out of the first round because in the past couple of years, there were guys like Drake Jackson out of Kentucky and Nick Harris out of Washington, who both were undersized, very athletic, very good zone blocking centers. But because they were under 295, they went, uh, I think they both went day three, and they were probably day two talents. So size is, is going to make a difference. There's only five centers in the NFL right now who weigh less than 300 pounds and only one that weighs less than Linderbaum, and that's uh, Jason Kelsey. Wow. And, and Kelsey was a six-round pick, so uh, it, he was definitely a, a diamond that they found, and he works very well in that system, but centers in the NFL are – they're 6'3", 309. They're, they're much bigger than, than – Linderbaum is now does that say he's not gonna be able to do it absolutely not in the right system he could be very good but depending on what Pittsburgh wants to run if they want to switch to an all zone run yeah he could be he can be the pick there but uh you know if you're gonna use uh, the the gap in power stuff it's gonna be I think he's gonna struggle real, real, real quick where are you at on Kendrick Green right now uh, uh pretty low I I expected more Maybe not, you know, like you said, he's on his, he's off his feet all the time. He gets, um, he misses, like he charges out with his head down and, um, you know, maybe the learning curve, we expected too much from him going in. Uh, right now he looks like a backup to me. And unfortunately, right, right. Going to be, and, and, you know, even though they've talked about possible guard going back to guard there, it still feels kind of a, like a last resort, uh, uh, with him, you know, uh, he's still, he's still going to be on the ground at guard. Yeah. Unless he figures it out, he's still going to be on the ground at guard, uh, just as he was, he's, he's going to have the same issues, merely moving him over one spot. Isn't going to be the end all do all. So right. I, I don't think, yeah, obviously you don't throw him out with the bath water, right, right yet, but man, you agree that this team's got to do something to at least have to, to bring in a veteran or something, uh, uh, not named J.C. Hassenauer, to to to, to kind of push this guy if the plan is to for him to can you continue on at center? And boy, what a what a what a a, boon, a, a balloon deflation that would be if they had to turn right around and draft another center, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the team expected more. I think they were able, I think they thought they'd be able to make Green what they want him to be. And it didn't work out. And you know, just because you make a mistake doesn't uh, make a mistake doesn't mean you have to stay with it. So right. there's no reason to keep throwing him out there if they don't think he's going to be the guy. If you have to, you know, bite the bullet and go draft another center, it, you're not you had you invested in a first round running back last year. You're going to be investing in a quarterback either through signing a veteran, a trade, or uh, drafting a rookie guy. You need guys up there to block for him. And, if you can't block, it doesn't matter who's behind them. So, especially with a first round running back now going into his second year, you know, right? He put up twelve hundred yards rushing behind that offensive line. Imagine what he could do with it, like you know a, a middle of the road offensive line. It just it really feels like they might go the. Uh, it really feels like they might go the, uh, the the free agent route in this, you know, because there are, are there any guys that you would uh, 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 stake your job on in this draft class right now when it comes to center. Not yet. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I've only watched, uh, I've watched Linderbaum. I've watched a little bit of the, uh, there's a kid from, uh, Kentucky that I'm watching right now who played guard and center. Uh, let me see if I have his name. Oh, Luke Fortner. Okay. He's a guy, um, the kid from Virginia tech. I want to look more into, you know, I'm looking for, like I said, guys with some size that are gonna, uh, be able to withstand the, the, big defensive tackles in the in the NFL so um unfortunately most of these guys coming out are less than 300 so either we switch to a zone running scheme or yeah you know maybe the veteran center is the way to go all right uh, one other guy you're uh, you're in, I, uh you're finishing up on Nate Landman a linebacker out of Colorado talk about him yeah he's a he's a day three guy um Six foot two and a quarter, two thirty six. Uh, he's a tackling machine. So, you know, that's sometimes those stats stand out, and you're like, okay, I got to look at this guy. So, yeah, three hundred forty seven tackles, uh, two hundred three solo, two hundred thirty three solo, forty two tackles for a loss. Uh, he can. He had you know a few forced fumbles, a few fumble recoveries. Um, 
He had a couple injuries the past couple years. Uh, he dealt with a, an Achilles in 2020, and it was a quote-unquote soft tissue injury last year that kept him to only seven games. Uh, I didn't know what to expect from him, and uh, I came away uh, underwhelmed. Mm. He's probably a two-down linebacker. Uh, if you drafted him 25 years ago, he'd be the you know the, the middle linebacker on a really good defense, just you know making all the tackles. But he just looked slow to me. He looked uh, like um, it, it basically just making plays in front of him was fine. Uh, you know, it, dropping into coverage, he just didn't look like he was. He's only a zone coverage guy who will, he did a nice job of reading the quarterback's eyes and trying to get in passing lanes, but he's not going to be able to cover man. He's not going to be able to, you know, match up with guys. So he's probably going to be only a, a a reserve for for somebody. But he, like I said, he's probably a late day three guy. But um, I wouldn't put him very high on our list right now. All right, who who are you chomping at the bit to uh, fight these guys for to do a report on next? Get get. Uh... <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, well, I'm really interested in that kid from Virginia Tech, Brock Hoffman, the the center. Okay. I want to look at him. Uh, uh, Wuzariki, the uh, defensive tackle, the five tech from. Uh, Iowa I, State. Yeah, I can't wait to I can't wait to dive. I I can't wait to read if you get him. I, I look forward to that one too. Yeah. Um. Reggie Roberson, the wide receiver from SMU, he's been a I've been a fan of his for the past few years, so I'd like to, uh, to take a look at him. Uh, there's the offensive lineman, uh, Chris Paul from Tulsa, seems very interesting. Cade Mays from Tennessee, uh, Darian Kennard from Kentucky. There's there's I mean there's it's like Christmas going to that <laughs> list and picking out which guy. It's, it, it literally takes me like half an hour to pick which guy because there's so many I want to look at. It's crazy. Well, I certainly, uh, uh, Tom, man, you've been, uh, I mean, you, you're like a brother to me at this point there. And and, and you, know, you just, you're, you're that guy that, I mean, Tom's 10 takes. I mean, what a segment <laughs> during uh, during the football season. What a great creation uh, uh, by you. The creativity in that and the way you pound that out so quickly after the game. I mean, it just, it's one of the top segments in, 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 in season there. And I think it was your, your, your three plays to watch or uh, what, what, what do you call that segment? Three plays to attack uh, whoever they're playing. Right, yeah. right. That's a fantastic segment. I mean, you are uh, you are at the core of what Steeler what what has made Steelers Depot uh, what it is today. You don't get enough praise from me or, or or anybody for that work there, but it's uh just outstanding. And and you've been a draft profile uh, contributor for numerous years now. I uh, look forward to reading uh, more of your work once again, uh, Tom. Uh, as always, and and you're always on stand by when I need you this time of year as well to uh, sit in on the terrible podcast. So uh, with that, uh, Tom, I certainly do appreciate you sitting in uh, uh, for Alex Kazora today on the terrible podcast. Thank you. I appreciate the love and uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, keep the seat warm for Alex. This is always a good time. And, uh, you know, this, this group that you've put together is fantastic. Like there's so many good quality people on here. It's, 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 it's a joy to, uh, to do this every day. I tell you, I am blessed to have the uh, the uh, the staff that we have uh, right now, and uh, obviously in future years, I think we're going to have you back down at the Senior Bowl uh, as well too, and you're going to be part of more of these off-season draft roundtables. I hope uh, in, mm-hmm. in 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 the coming weeks as well too. So once again, Tom, thanks for being on the Terrible Podcast. Thank you, Dave. All right, so uh, in case I need this ending for the show, we'll we'll wrap it up here. If if not, I'll tag on another one here. Uh, 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 if I have a guest on the Monday show, but you can follow me on Twitter at Steeders Depot. Follow Alex on Twitter at Alex underscore Kazora. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show the Terrible Podcast at gmail dot com. If you like what we do and want to donate to the cause, go to Steeders Depot dot com. Hit the donate button up right navigational bar. Also, if you like an ad free version, please go to Steeders Depot dot com and hit the ad free button for. $25, you can get an ad-free version of the site. Uh, Alex, have a great trip, man. I can't wait to read all the stuff and 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 and, and all that you guys put out, the four, four people that we have going down there, so it should be an entertaining time down there in my old neck of the woods of Mobile, if you will, we used to call it. But uh, anyway, as always, thanks for listening to the Terrible Podcast with Dave and Alex. <laughs>